At the time of recording this segment, gas prices in Canada are over $1.30 a litre, and oil prices are hitting record highs of about $122 a barrel. Canadian drivers are looking for relief at the pumps, and one thing's for certain, if they're buying a new car, it has to be more efficient than the car it replaces. Toyota is well placed in the market to respond. They've got small efficient cars like the Yaris and the Corolla and they're the leaders in hybrid technology with over one million hybrid vehicles sold worldwide. This is the 2008 Toyota Highlander Hybrid ready to ride to the rescue. But with a starting price of over $41,000 it ain't cheap. This top model, the Hybrid Limited, is over $54,000. By comparison, the regular gas V6 Limited is $47,000. The hybrid version has exclusive styling features. The base hybrid gets unique 17-inch wheels and on the Limited, 19-inch wheels. The headlights have a blue tint to them along with a slightly different grille. There are hybrid badges on the side and rear of the Highlander, but they're kept to a discreet minimum. Now, One of the selling features for the base gasoline variants is that you get three rows of seats for seven people as standard equipment. Not the case with the hybrid. If you get the base model, you only get two rows of seats for five, and you have to spend extra to get a comfort package to upgrade to three rows of seats. If, however, you buy a limited like the one we have here, it all comes standard. Now, the thing about hybrid vehicles is they obviously have batteries in there, and they weigh a lot, so the payload of a hybrid is diminished. A hybrid's payload is about 1,200 pounds. If you get a base model gasoline V6, it's over 1,800 pounds. Earlier in the season, Zach and I had a chance to drive the regular gasoline version of the Highlander, and I really liked it. Now, if you want to have a look at that review, you can go to our website. But here's an overview of some of the interior features that we liked. Many seven-passenger SUVs have cramped seating in the back, but we found the second row to be very roomy, and the third row was not too much of a sacrifice at all. The second row can be converted into captain's chairs by stowing the center seat away in a hidden storage area. Very handy. The dash layout's very easy to use. The new wider dimensions give the cabin an airy feel and the seats are big and comfortable. The backup camera's very useful and the computer interface for the stereo and Navi system are easy to use. Overall, the interior's a winner. We still find the hard plastic pieces on the doors and parts of the dash to be less than appealing. But what's most unique about the hybrid is the way it drives. Toyota calls their hybrid system Hybrid Synergy Drive. What that means in essence is that the gasoline engine and the electric motors are working together seamlessly to propel this Highlander. The gasoline part of the equation is a smaller V6 than found in the regular gasoline version. Those vehicles get a 3.5 liter and in the hybrid it's a 3.3 liter V6. When matched to the electric motors, the horsepower is identical to the 3.5 at 270 horsepower. But the torque output is less than the gasoline versions by 36 pound-feet. The power developed by the gasoline engine and the electric motor in the front deliver power mostly to the front wheels for the majority of the time. There is another electric motor at the back of the vehicle that is only used to power the rear wheels when slippage is detected. Unlike the regular gasoline version, which is a full-time four-wheel drive system, that vehicle feels a little bit more stable and planted on the road, where this vehicle, under hard acceleration, you can get a little bit of wheel slippage in the front wheels, and also there's some torque steer. I'm not crazy about this pure hybrid system where it switches from electric to gasoline and uses a continuously variable transmission. I do prefer the hybrids that have the gasoline engine running all the time, much like the General Motors and the Honda products, because they use a regular automatic transmission at four or five speed. Now, what they've done with this Highlander is they've made the steering very, very light. It's electric power steering, and it feels a little bit vague on center. Also, the quietness and smoothness of the vehicle, it really doesn't give much back to the driver. It's not a driver's car. It's more like you're along for a smooth ride. It's the kind of ride I think that women will like. 
Zach can keep his firm ride, hard steering, and boy racer stuff, because this is much more my style. What I really like with the Highlander is that it's smooth, quiet, and sophisticated, but it's still practical and very roomy. And if you opt for the hybrid version, it's even more sophisticated. When the vehicle is stopped, it's perfectly quiet. The gasoline engine is off, and all you hear is the radio. Once you drive away, the electric motors do the work, and at higher speeds or when more power is needed, the gasoline engine comes on, but it's almost undetectable. The one thing about this hybrid vehicle that I'm not really loving is the continuously variable transmission. Now, when you're trying to get the acceleration up, the gas engine kicks in and it really drones while it's trying to get the vehicle up to speed. So you combine this with how the engine sounds, and it feels like the vehicle is actually underperforming. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, what's the big deal? I mean, you're going to have to have some sort of a compromise if you want to get better fuel economy, right? Well, that would be fine if this Highlander did get better fuel economy, but that's not the case. The Highlander Hybrid is rated at 7.4 litres per 100 kilometres in the city, or 38 miles per gallon, and 8 litres per 100 kilometres on the highway, or 35 miles per gallon. But here's the rub. We've yet to get a hybrid that can achieve these numbers in real-world conditions. Our testing and combined city and highway driving came out to 12 litres per 100 kilometres, or 23 miles per gallon. That's not much better than the regular V6. Keep in mind that hybrids typically get worse mileage in cold weather, so Canadians have a disadvantage. The Toyota Highlander Hybrid is a very unique vehicle, but I think it's going to be one of those ones that you're either going to love it or want to pass on it. What do you think, Zach? Well, I'll tell you whether I'd love it or pass on it in a moment. What I do like about the Highlander is not just about the Highlander Hybrid, it's about all of the Highlanders. The new exterior styling is a big improvement. The larger dimensions make it much more comfortable on the inside. The interior is well designed. The seating is very comfortable. All of that you can get in a gasoline or this hybrid version. Now on the downside for me, it all surrounds the way this vehicle drives. And I'm not particularly thrilled with hybrids in general. It's not particularly inspiring it doesn't really handle that well the steering is kind of vague there's a drone of the engine it's not that much fun to drive and you know what we talked about the mileage already it might just be us that we have a bit of a lead foot but we're not really getting the best mileage out of this thing what do you think well you know what Zach I'll say it again but I disagree with you I have to be honest I really like that softer steering makes it a little easier to drive a big vehicle like this I like that it's smooth quiet comfortable and I do like the exterior your styling and on the downside as I already mentioned I really don't like the CVT and the starting price if you're looking at buying a hybrid vehicle because you want to save a little bit of money at the pumps as we mentioned before it's really not getting the greatest mileage so it's actually a, a very expensive way to save a little bit of money so Zach what do you think take it or leave it you know what personally for me I would pass I prefer if I was looking to save some money to go and get a torquey turbo diesel with lots of power that's more my speed but I can see the smooth the quiet the sophistication all of that would appeal to uh, a woman exactly like me for complete specs go to our website at drivingtelevision.com